Hi everybody, welcome back. I am joined by none other than Steve Deacon. Hello, sir, how are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me here in sunny Florida. Look at this, I set up this beautiful set just for you. Oh, isn't it amazing? I love it the colors of the flowers. And, you know, day. it's just the such a nice day. The birds chirping in the background. Oh, it's just so relaxing. I love it. All right, so Steve, I'm sensing, um, I'm hearing a bit of an accent. Where are you from, sir? <laughs> <laughs> well, for those of you that don't know me, I'm from Vancouver, Canada. Mm -hmm. is, is, is the accent really hard or? I mean, it's it's noticeable, I would say, yeah. but obviously Mr. Canada himself. So why don't we just kind of Canadian, all that good stuff. Did you grow up in Vancouver? I Have did. you lived there your whole life? I did. I was born and raised in Vancouver. Uh, uh, my parents uh, moved me out to a little suburb uh, called Port Moody, which is about half an hour east of Vancouver. Uh, that's where I, I went to school and played all my sports and um grew up and uh, i've stayed in the area my entire life i like i love it in canada you must have to, n well, to never go anywhere else well this is really hard to beat you know with the weather you know it's uh it's true you know it's i think it's fixing to snow in in vancouver so well, i hope the ski resorts yeah. need it too well, so <laughs> yeah you know and i'm i'm in here en enjoying the sunshine i know you got to take a little break every once well, in a while you know so what I, I love the geography lesson for all the non-canadians what province is that in oh okay well that would be in british columbia okay and for those of you that don't know i'm just above seattle yes because we we're, we like know there's like well, sections up there but I, we're like i don't know anything i gotta dumb it down for you exactly okay. it's it's what you got to do for the audience steve <laughs> i appreciate it all right so we know i think most people know you come from a very heavy tennis background um just kind of what was it like, you know, growing up in Vancouver, your family, what did they do, siblings, Yeah, et you, you know, it, it's a, uh, I'm a sibling-free uh, household. <gasps> only I'm, child, I'm that only explains child. a lot. It, doesn't it? It does, right. yes. <laughs> so I, my dad was, a, you know, always a, a very active person, um, you know, got me into sports really, you know, early on in life. And I was playing, you know, many sports. I was playing soccer and, and, and baseball and, and, and then I picked up a little bit of tennis and um, I, I enjoyed all three sports, uh, mm -hmm. you know, to be honest. And, uh, it, 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 you know, I played from a, a, a very, you know, young age. And um, I, I think what ended up happening was um, my parents were getting run ragged. You know, I was going to soccer practice oh, sure. one day, mm -hmm. tennis practice another day, baseball practice another day. and. I think they came to me one day and said, hey, you, you got to make a, a choice here. And uh, it, it was funny because I, why I chose tennis, I, I, I still can't really answer that question today. Um, you know, I actually really enjoyed, you know, the team aspect of, of baseball. Sure. And, um, it, you, you know, that team camaraderie for me was, was always something pretty cool. But I decided to kind of take the plunge, uh, you know, into tennis. And, and, and it was, you know, one of the best things I ever did. Um, you know, I played a, a lot of competitive tennis from, you know, I'd say age nine, you know, right up until I was 18. Uh, so I had a pretty long kind of uh, drawn out career, which, uh, y you know, I, I, I traveled a lot and saw a lot of, you know, real cool places, uh, met a lot of uh, amazing people along the way. And um, it, it opened up a, a, a lot of doors for me, for mm -hmm. sure. I love that you said it was kind of nine you start. So basically your parents came to you as an eight and nine year old and were like, what do you want to do with your life, Steve? <laughs> Make a choice. Well, I love that is the kind of parenting that I can get behind. <laughs> yeah, you know, and, and they were, you, you know, super supportive. And uh, I think it was actually probably 11 or 12 when they I had to pull, uh, make a pretty big adult decision of yep. what I wanted to do uh, from, a, from a sporting perspective. Um, I, you know, would, would I have loved to have, have played pro tennis for a career, of course, but it, it, it wasn't meant to be. Mm -hmm. You know, I had a, um, a fairly serious injury when I was 17, just kind of when I, you know, I, I got going with the, with the tennis career. Um, and then I had another major decision to make as a, you know, 17, 18 year old. Mm -hmm. You know, do I get a, a surgery done, put me back a year or two, and then pick up where I left off? You know, and, and, you know, part of me, you know, felt inside that I was probably 
going to make it as far as I did. And, mm -hmm. and I guess in, in my young, immature mind at the time, I made the decision t to retire from tennis mm -hmm. at, at, at like 18 years old yep. uh, before I, I kind of really got going with the sport, if yeah. that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. You know, I had some amazing opportunities. You know, I, I played uh, in the Pan American Games in 1991. Um, I played pro tennis for three years. Um, got to travel a ton and, and meet all sorts of cool people. So I, I really did enjoy, you know, uh, that end of things. The only regret I had, I, I guess, was was not going to college. You know, I had, you know, so many, you know, glorious opportunities uh, to go on full ride scholarships mm -hmm. to to probably a dozen different schools in the states and like who knows what would have happened sure. if i would have gone that route yep you know maybe i wouldn't have got hurt pushing it so hard on the tour yep right uh, maybe i would have developed more physically uh even y y you know matured a bit more mm -hmm. and, and then maybe at 22 i could have you know maybe had a really good career sure so did you as you were kind of getting into you know, in your teens and kind of through high school, getting into tennis, when did the mindset kind of shift into, I want this to be my career? Like this is where my life is going now is tennis. Yeah, that's a, a really good question. I, I think once, you know, Tennis Canada had showed, you know, some interest in me, mm -hmm. um, I was winning national championships at 13. Sure. Um, I felt at that time, I think I can make a career out of sure. this. Uh, and, and that was obviously a, a, a dream. Mm -hmm. um, it was close to being a reality, I guess. Yeah. Um, and, then, and then the injury, right? And, you know, looking back, I probably could have done some things a, a lot differently. Um, we all could, Steve. I, <laughs> I, I probably would have, uh, you know, elected to get the, you know, the procedure done, which was at that time, cutting edge right sure. uh, so i was, well, so so let I was people, nervous let people know that don't really know so you talk about this kind of career ending injury that you had what exactly happened what was the injury kind of what were the options on the table at yeah that time? so so essentially it, it was an injury called tommy johns and that's that's typically a pitcher's injury in okay. baseball so it was a an inner elbow injury and at that time, and, and I'm sure things have changed in, you know, how many, 25 plus years? Oh my God, I'm dating myself. <laughs> it, it involved, you know, transplanting a, a ligament from one okay. wrist into the elbow. And it, so it, it would be about a year and a half rehab on it at okay. that time. And, and this was, you know, in my mind, I'm like, that's my whole that's, career. That's the end of that's the world. That's the end of the yep. world. Where mm -hmm. do I go with this? Mm -hmm. What do I do? Yeah. Do, do uh, you know, so I asked my parents, you know, and they said, well, you know, like, what, what do you think you should do? Mm -hmm. Right. And, you know, so they kind of put it back on me uh, at, at that point. And, and I, was, I was totally OK with that. Yeah. Um, and I made the decision to uh, to, to retire. And, and I, I literally stopped playing tennis and didn't go back for many, many years. Mm -hmm. So obviously tennis, a big part of growing up in your childhood and all of that, in addition to a couple other sports until you got super serious, what are some of your other kind of favorite childhood memories from growing up uh, with your parents or yeah. friends or anything? Yeah, yeah, it's no. Non-sports like, related. You know, it was, it was funny because I, I, I had th thought about that a lot because I, I, I figured, you know, this would, would probably come up at uh -huh. some, uh, some point <laughs> knowing you. Uh-huh. Um, you know, one extremely fond memory I had, right? And, and, you know, so many people, you know, can't think back that far, right? Mm -hmm. I remember being three years old, okay? You have a three-year-old I have a three-year-old memory. I have a three-year-old mem three memory. Uh, my dad had bought me a wooden tennis racket from this department store called Woodward's. Okay. Okay. And, and it's no longer in business, but that's neither here nor there. They had these dollar forty nine days where everything in the store was a dollar forty nine. Wow! So my first tennis racket mm -hmm. was a dollar forty nine, and I remember my dad vividly like walking me to this elementary school that was about a block from the house that we lived in mm -hmm. in Vancouver at that time. 
I remember it being such a long walk because, you know, little legs yep, and, yep. Uh, you know, and, and uh, so I remember dragging my tennis racket behind me. The reason why I remember this is because when I got to this elementary school, there was this wall, you know, like a cement wall. Mm -hmm. And my dad gives me the ball. I take the racket and I literally start hitting this ball against the wall and I had very good coordination at like three years old wow like I you know obviously it, it wasn't stellar sure, sure you know it was give me a break here uh -huh, uh -huh. but it was something that I knew that you were like something makes sense some, here something it makes fits. a lot of sense mm -hmm. this, this having something in this hand makes sense and hitting a, a yellow ball makes sense but that wasn't the fun part the fun part was afterwards we would always go to this um convenience store on the corner right by our house and he'd always buy me a fudgicle and uh, you know so so I I love, I love uh you know I love fudgicles right mm -hmm. so those you know that was a, a pretty fond memory early on and then of course you know uh, as I developed into a, a little tennis player we, we traveled a lot mm -hmm. and um you know both Did my your parents always come with you it, for the most part up until I was about 14 Okay. Um, they would, would travel with me pretty much everywhere and, and, and watch me compete until I started working with Tennis Canada. And then at that time, I, uh, I flew away. Flew, flew the coop? <laughs> I flew the coop and, and I, did a, space. I did a lot of traveling on my own. I spent a lot of time actually in, in Florida uh, nice. training and uh, with, with the, the whole Tennis Canada crew at that time. So. Nice. Yeah, it was, you know, real special times for sure. Pickleball, P-I-C-K-L-E space B-A-L-L. -L. Pickleball. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Next contestant, please. P-I-C-K-L-E dash B-A-L-L. -L. Incorrect, next please. Uh, can you use it in a sentence? I was inducted into the Pickleball Hall of Fame. Uh, can I have the definition? So we've kind of talked off camera about um, the entire sort of professional sports world can be very uh, enticing to young people as they get into it. And I know you've kind of talked about how growing up and being very serious about tennis, you were very focused, mm -hmm. you were you were a very good boy growing up. Uh, you know, my dad had a similar story. He was. A big tennis player and he was he was just that's all he didn't want to mess up anything so it was just all tennis all the time so did you feel was there that influence in tennis of you know partying or kind of that atmosphere that you either had to stay away from felt the draw towards as a, as a young gentleman yeah no like it, to, to your point right like when i was training to be a professional tennis player mm -hmm. Uh, it never even crossed my mind. You were like, not even, not, not a even, chance. not even mm -hmm. going there. It's, it, I was always trained. It's not good for your body. Mm -hmm. That's where, you know, I, I, I feel I kind of, uh, this may sound funny, you know, missed out a little bit. Sure. Like I, I wasn't that typical teenager that would um, go to house parties. Sure. Um, you know, I was traveling a lot. Um, I had good friends in school. Mm -hmm. But I was kind of always doing my own thing um, and, and missed out on, you know, grads and, and things like that because mm -hmm. I was I was playing. Yep. Um, you know, but it, uh, you know, it definitely progressed, you know, and, and it, it, once I, I stopped playing tennis, um, y you know, all cards were kind of thrown onto the mm -hmm. table. And um, of course, you know, as a, as a young adult, you know, I... Um, you know, started drinking and, you know, having fun. And, uh, you know, I took up, um, you know, golf and started mountain biking and, uh, you know, really kind of threw myself into my job at that time. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I got 
married at a super young age, mm -hmm. um, 24 years old, got married, started adulting. Uh-huh, uh, had you, you your know, daughter. Yeah, had my daughter, mm -hmm. Taylor, um, when I was 25. Mm -hmm. So she'll be 22 here in, in, in a little bit, which is, is super exciting. So I, I, I hate even saying that, you know, <laughs> know. like. You're like, what, I have a full grown adult I, daughter. I have an adult daughter, mm -hmm. yeah, and almost an adult son too, yeah. but <laughs> it, I grew up quickly. Yep. Um, you know, I kind of, I felt lived in this kind of sheltered mm -hmm. kind of, bubble. Uh, yeah, bubble. Yep. And, and uh, you know, uh, started adulting super early. Do you feel like because I know a lot of people that have sort of your same experience growing up in a sport where the aspiration is to play professionally, that's kind of what your life is all about. You you know, forgo a lot of the other typical or normal things about growing up. Do you feel like then after you hurt yourself and it kind of like, what, what's your mindset as you're going into that? Your, you know, your whole future that you'd envisioned is done now that you'd kind of planned and it's, it's almost like you didn't prepare yourself for anything else. So now when you're like, oh my gosh, like I got to live a real life now, yeah. do I even know what I'm doing? Yeah, you know, like for, for me, um, this was a, a mad source of uh, depression, mm -hmm. right? I, I kind of, you know, once I figured out that I was no longer the big fish in the big pond, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, and I had to... Find, get a job and you know support myself which are all things that we we always do some people handle it differently mm -hmm. than others um you know i i found that i i turned inward mm -hmm. a little bit um it there were some tough times you know um you know the 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 depression um was tough which i didn't really figure out oh yeah was depression I, yep for quite some years down mm -hmm. the road um y y you know i had uh, some pretty serious substance abuse issues mm -hmm. um that i i really you know dug into deep mm -hmm. you know and 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 these were with me throughout my whole adult life like sure being a budding tennis star and then having it snatched away like that and, and not having that um, experience, you know, with, with drinking or drugs or whatever mm -hmm. it may have been. Mm -hmm. When tennis ended, I needed something else to mm -hmm. kind of focus on. And it's not even necessarily focus. I feel like so many people in the situation where whatever the case may be when you when you lose something that you had always planned on there's that void and you it's like you feel out of control you need to f something you can control yes. and when people turn to you know addictions or substance abuse it's you're trying to fill that void that you just don't know what to do uh, with now uh, of course you are and and uh, and, and i i found that to be the easy way out mm -hmm. you know and and, and, and to, to be completely honest like I struggled, you know, for years, sure. um, you know, trying to figure out, you know, like what's wrong with me, you know, like, cause I always knew like deep down, like, okay, I was a champion. Yeah. I am a champion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, it was surreal, you know, to, to be completely honest and uh, to be able to have that ability, um, to realize, you know, that, hey, you're, you're not going down the right path. Sure. Um, to, to make some, some tough decisions, um, to look at yourself in the mirror and say, you know, you've got to do something here. You're a father, you're a husband, um, you're a son, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I felt, um, I felt pretty empty at times. Yeah. Do you feel... Was this something that you, your parents were aware of that they were, you let them into this or was it kind of a battling on your own? Yeah, you know, it, it was funny because I, I remember uh, very, very vividly, like I, I struggled hard and, mm -hmm. and I was sick for, for quite a few years. Um, 
I, I remember my dad asking me, you know, like, hey, are, like, I dropped like a whole ton of weight and, yeah. you know, I was really in a bad spot and he said, hey, are you, are you okay? And I said, no, no, just, just stress at work. And, you know, and um, my stepmom actually said to my dad, because my dad didn't want to see it, right? Yep. And, and, and he said, he's, he's doing drugs. He's not feeling good, mm -hmm. right? And, uh, he, you know, that obviously caused a lot of, of uh, tension and, and friction in the relationship. Sure. Um, what parent knows how to handle mm -hmm. something like that, right? Especially me being an only child, too. Like, sure. I was on an island. Yep. Um, you know, but I, I went back to um, kind of how I became a champion tennis player mm -hmm. and I, I and I realized that you know I looked at myself in the mirror and said we, we can't go on like this so I I, I took some steps um, hard steps and I uh, had checked myself in to um, a, a treatment facility mm -hmm. um, recognized that I you know had some issues um, was do dealing with not only you know the depression mental health issues which apparently I learned stemmed from my failed tennis career well, which I mean, you know like no I, surprise I, there <laughs> yeah and uh and also dealing with with the addiction issue sure. which um it, it's it's not easy no um how old were you when you went into the first for first I, treatment time i was 29 okay i was 29 and and let me t I'll, I'll tell anybody out there that's that's struggling with addiction not a lot of people get it done right the first time sure um, I failed miserably, you know, um, it, it, it took me five times of going in and out and in mm -hmm. and out of these treatment facilities before I, I got it right. Well, so many of us too, when we're struggling with something, we want to be better, but it's so much work to get there and it's it's so comfortable to go back to what you know, even if it's harmful to you and others. It, it, it's a bit of a, a safety net, mm -hmm. if you will, right? And, uh, you know, I went through some incredibly uh, tough times. Um, you know, some long nights on the phone with, you know, my sponsor. Um, you know, some, some incredible urges to make myself feel better. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, you know, I, I, I took a hard look at myself again and said, listen, what do you want from life moving forward, mm -hmm. right? Um, I want to be a good person. I want to be a good dad. I want to be a good husband. Um, these were all things that kept me driving in the right direction. Mm -hmm. I love it. Well, guys, we will be back in just a second with more of this amazing chat with Steve Deacon. Do not go anywhere.